Hello, my Facebook friends and family, and those of you who are now joining me on Deep to Deep. This is our first, uh, or my first posting in terms of a video. I look forward to us having an, a healthy conversation, a great discourse, and remember what we said from the beginning, that this is for those who are qualified to receive the information. Jesus, when he spoke in Scripture, and he always spoke deep things to disciples, he said, those who have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. And it's important for us to get that, because there are many people who hear, or they have ears, but they do not have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Uh, you may look at my attire and say, well, I'm accustomed to seeing him on YouTube videos with his suit and, and his tie and the rest of it. But I realized that uh, on purpose, God led me to dress this way because everything is done on purpose. I'm dressing in a casual outfit because I want to speak to deep people who will understand that it's not about how you dress. It's about what your spirit is saying. And the church for too long has been captivated by the robes and by the collars and by the, the ties and the, the, the immaculate appearances of men and women. And they have missed the spirit behind what is speaking. If the spirit of Christ is in any one of us, John the Baptist was eating wild honey and he was eating locusts. He was a wild man. He was dressed in, in clothing that no one in the synagogue would accept. But he was preaching a new voice, a new word which says, Repent, for the kingdom of God is, or heaven is at hand or is near. Jesus, when he came on the scene, he was absolutely misunderstood because he did not look like a king, but yet he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. God spoke through Christ, or Christ spoke in the person of God. He said, listen, when he saw the scribes and Pharisees, he said, you look good on the outside, but inside you dress well. You look perfect, but on the inside you are nothing but a dead men's bones. I am here to talk to you today. Don't look at the outward appearance. Let us talk word. Let us talk life. Let us talk logos and rima. Now, an interesting discussion was had on Facebook yesterday because one of my sons in ministry, he posted something that was directly from scripture. And it's, it's, a, it's a topic that will cause many people to become extremely upset and extremely uh, uncomfortable because here's what he, he spoke to. He spoke to the fact that Jesus in addressing his disciples said to them, these signs shall follow them who believe. That's in the book of Mark chapter uh, six, uh, 16. He said, these signs will follow those who believe because before Jesus made that statement, he was rebuking the disciples for the unbelief and their hard-heartedness. He said, I told you I would rise from the dead. When I rose from the dead and I sent the message to you, you had the nerve to say it didn't happen. How can you doubt and question me? He said, I'm going to rebuke your unbelief, but I'm not going to show you how people will know a believer. He said, these signs will follow them who believe in my name. The first sign, in my name they will cast out demons. They will lay hands on the sick. They will recover. They will pick up serpents, not snake handling. He didn't talk about that. He's talking about the fact that dangerous beasts may try to harm you, but you'll have a rulership over it. How do you understand that, that statement? It goes back to the Garden of Eden. When man was first formed by God, created in the image of God, he had authority over every creature. Therefore, when God has now come into man and God has now re, uh, uh, taken residency in a believer, that person is now restored to the state that Adam was in terms of spiritual power. We have authority over all creatures. That's what he's talking about. Now, next he said, they will lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. He said you will drink deadly things and it wouldn't harm you. Which now tells us then, you wouldn't go mixing some poison and say, well, I'll try to see what happened or I'll take a cyanide pill and I'll chew on it to see if I'll die. That's not what God is saying because Jesus said to Satan, don't tempt the Lord your God. Don't try to do anything to test God's power. He's saying if you encounter though a situation in which someone is, is, has given you poison and they look and expect you to die, the power of a believer will show that person that you think I'll die in an hour, but I'm here five days later. That person will then be converted because they understand the power of God. Now, let's go to the text. The text in Mark 5 says that Jesus, in Mark 16, Jesus is saying these signs will follow a believer. Let's see the color of the writing. It's written in red. It is a quotation of Christ. It is God. It is Christos. It is the anointed one speaking. He said, if you believe, signs will follow you. Now, the people got tricky and they said, some people said, you know what? Well, what about if I'm loving somebody? What about if I'm kind to somebody? Is not a sign that God is in me? Listen, 
There's a difference between manifesting the presence of God and manifesting the power of God. But let me show you where the, trip of the trick of the enemy is. He wants the church to think that you could just be nice to people and that shows that you have God in you. That is a lie. Let, me, let us get deep here for a minute. If Jesus said, when you believe in me, signs will follow you and the signs that follow you shall be demons, first of all, being cast out. Why was he so specific about this demon thing? Because Jesus knows that Demons are spirits. They are angels who are once in his presence and they know him when they see him. So anyone who believes, which means in Greek, to have a deep conviction that changes your whole psyche, your thinking, your whole mind. He says anyone who believes in him will now have the power. Watch this. The power of being recognized by demons. So whenever Jesus showed up somewhere, demons saw him. And they knew his power. So if Jesus now is believed upon and he's now in the person, in the person, in me, when I show up, demons will not see my face. They will see who is within me because demons don't relate to flesh. They are spirit beings and they understand spirit. So the demons now are supposed to see Christ in the believer. The next thing that will happen is because they see Christ in the believer, they will address what they see and they will bow to what they see. That's why most times when you are, when demons are being exercised or cast out of people, the person falls to the ground. The person will always be at the feet of the one in whom Christ dwells. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Because demons understand power and they understand worship. They were always in the presence of God, so they knew the power of bowing. And when Jesus in a person shows up, they will have to bow to you, not to your face. They bow into what they see inside of the believer. Now, let me talk to those who are tuning in to Deep to Deep, or you're watching this video and you're about to make your comments. The First Corinthians chapter 2 says something that shallow believers, shallow believers or shallow people in the church always like to quote and they misunderstand the whole text. It says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, not ears and not eyes. I has not one, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart, singular, of man. The things which God has prepared for him or for those who love him. Now that sounds deep and we like to encourage people to say, well, you know, you don't see what God has in store for you and God has a blessing down the road, but you, I haven't seen it. That is nothing close to what the scripture is saying. The scripture is literally saying this to us, that verse 10 explains it. It says, but, but, God has revealed it. So a normal eye hasn't seen it. A normal ear has not heard it. A normal heart, not is what is in, heart is not what's in your chest. Heart is your conviction, your thinking. The normal heart has not even been able to comprehend what God has in store. But God has revealed it to them or revealed it to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the Scripture says, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of that man? And what man knows the spirit of God except the, the mind of God except the spirit of God? Listen to me. The only way that you could see, hear, or know what God has in store for you is if you are deep enough for Holy Ghost to reveal it. What is he talking about? Not house and car and bicycle. He's talking about the manifestation of the power of God in the life of believer. Only Holy Ghost could come into you and convince you that you are not Nigel. For me, he, didn't, he had to tell me, you are not Nigel. That's why he said there's a name that's given to you in heaven. You're not what earth calls you. You are who I have called you because if any man is in Christ... He is a new creature. He now has a new structure and he's not no longer flesh. He is now a spirit being that's being manifested in the earth so that man could relate to him. But don't be fooled by what you see. We are always deeper than what we assume to be if we are in Christ. So when you are in Christ now, look at the text. If you are in Christ, it means when you show up, what is it the demons are seeing? Are they seeing you? You are in Christ. They don't see you. When you show up and you are in Christ, they see Christ. And they respond to him by manifestations of different forms. But even if they don't show manifestation that the church is accustomed to, they will always show reverence. And the reverence they show, like the girl in Acts chapter uh, 15, I think it is, who kept saying that Paul and Silas are men of the Most High God. That does not cause the Christ to miss what the demon is doing because Christ always sees demons and demons always see Christ. I want you to share with me what you feel about this whole thing because let me share deeper for you before I go. 
believers or church people, let me say church people no, don't mean believers. Church people are those who go to church and who think they're all smart. Church people do not like to face truth. If Jesus said that these signs will follow the believer, you come in to tell me what is supposed to happen when you believe. Now drop your ideologies, drop your, your, pen, your, 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 your whole denominational blockades and tell the truth. Because Jesus said, I am the way, I am truth, I am the life. Truth said to us, truth, which is ultimate reality, ultimate truth said to us, that I've, if I say that these signs will follow you when you believe, you tell me today what is supposed to happen if you do not see the signs. What is that telling you? Be honest with yourself, be honest with the Lord, and be honest with this forum, and let's talk as deep people.